All right, so what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of J Now Garage. It has been a while since we have been in here yet again, and I've got a lot of work done behind the camera that I just didn't have time to film. But today we are going to be getting back to work, and I am going to try and produce a video for you guys. So today we're going to be working on the Camaro. Uh, I've been running into a couple problems with my fuel injection system, and I've been running the uh, Fitech. 750 horsepower uh, LS induction kit and I'm having a, a slight problem with a takeoff from a dig or from just a slow roll anything below 3200 RPMs um, the car almost sounds like it's in like an anti-lag but this is a NA motor so I'm not running a turbo or anything like that so my thought was I'm getting fuel cut from somewhere uh, so today I'm going to be installing a fuel pressure gauge I'm also going to be installing a oil pressure gauge um, and I'm going to show you them right now so I've decided to go with the uh, the glow shift gauges let me step back some. because uh, uh, I've told you guys before this is no like true Z28 car or anything crazy like that uh, this is just a plain Jane, you know, two-door Camaro, pretty much. Uh, it came original with a six-cylinder in it, so originality is not a thing for me. So I'm more into the customized look at this point. Um, but another main reason I went with the glow shift gauges is because I want to get rid of the tri-gauge inside the car, which I'll show you now because sooner or later I am going to be doing interior work on this car and it is going to be it's still going to look fairly original except for I'm going to have the digital gauges in the pillar here which I'm waiting on uh, it should be in the mail today and then I'm also going to be doing the digital gauges inside here so uh, the tri gauges right here mounted on the bottom of the dash the main reason I want to get rid of these they still work fine, they still do their job fine, but I have a coolant uh, sensor that came with my Phytech kit and I can read all that through my little handheld here. However, uh, I did not have an oil pressure gauge, so I'm still having to use this oil pressure gauge, but these two gauges aren't being used. And my little brother, he is also, um, He's got a Chevelle that he is currently in the works of trying to get going. And uh, these gauges are set up perfectly for the old school small block stuff. And that's what he's going to be running in his Chevelle. So uh, in getting rid of these, they're not actually going anywhere. They're actually going to be put back to use. Um, but also, like I said, I'm, since I'm going to be running the digital gauges inside my uh, cluster and everything, uh, I don't see there being a problem with me running... Uh, the gauges the digital gauges here and they're they're really easy to use they're easy to work on there's minimal wiring needed to uh, to set these up to uh, look and they look really cool uh, I could I really don't care so much about the colors here uh, I'm mainly just gonna run white the entire time it is a cool thing so you know, if I do happen to get digital gauges that can change color, I may choose a custom color to run, but uh, I'm mainly just using it for the gauge purposes. Um, and then uh, the main thing that uh, to get all this to work is this piece here. So I ordered this from AN Hoses Direct, and that is just a, uh, it is a AN-6 uh, I think it they called it a T adapter or it, it's a, basically a TN with two 1 8 uh, MPT female ports on it so my fuel pressure gauge which is in here or the fuel pressure sensor which is in here will thread directly into this bottom port here and then I also am going to be throwing in a, a bleeder valve which this is just basically a brake caliper bleeder but uh, they, they can withstand the 58 PSI easily. And then I also just ordered this little cap here. And then this is just, this piece here is just a leftover 
from where I installed the cap on the end of this fuel rail here, which is where this whole setup is going to be going. Um, and I forgot you guys haven't seen this motor completed, but this is it pretty much in its final state as of right now. Um, I do have two more blocks outside that I plan on building uh, some bigger horsepower numbers out of. Uh, I'm kind of working with some guys on uh, getting some uh, really good uh, ported heads and everything that I may install onto this motor later. Uh, right now, though, I'm really just I'm just trying to enjoy this car while it's driving and everything because it was down and out for a while. And as far as cruising and stuff goes, uh, this EFI system is great. Uh, I get anywhere from like 16 to 17 miles to the gallon in it right now when I'm not on a major highway or interstate or something like that because with the Turbo 400 and 373s, 65 to 70 mile an hour is achieved at like 3,000 to 3,300 RPMs, which is revving it on up there, and that's burning a lot of gas. But when I'm cruising the back roads, you know, 45, 50, going to car shows, uh, it's it's really easy to get pretty decent gas mileage out of this inje fuel injection system. Um, and the oil pressure gauge, I can show you it real quick. I don't know if you can see it, but it's off back in here. And I actually bought an adapter from ICT Billet to make my old school gauges work. And I thought I was going to have to replace that, but it is the same uh, thread and uh, size and everything to fit the sensor, which is the same size as the fuel pressure sensor. So uh, I'm going to quit rambling now that you guys are kind of up to date. And uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get this uh, straightened out right here on the fuel first get all that installed and get the pressure or get the sensor installed and then i'm going to work on getting the oil pressure sensor out and getting it uh getting all those gauges out of the car but i'll update you guys as we go along with it so that way you can see uh my progress all right you guys so uh well excuse the noise uh but Everything went really smooth getting this piece on. It actually looks pretty good, and I've already got the sensor on right here, and there's a little bit of gas on the bottom, but that's because I, I made sure that this bleeder was going to work properly. Uh, but I did check it. There's no leaks, so all that looks good. And now uh, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can feed uh, the old coolant thermostat uh, back through the firewall along with the oil pressure line and then uh, once I get all that through that hole right there in the firewall then uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run the sensor wires into the uh, cab uh, from the sensor from both of the sensors um, so that way I'm pretty much done under here other than like tidying up the wiring once I figure out how much slack I need and everything like that. And then that way I can work solely on the cab and making sure that all that's nice and neat and looks really good. Uh, but I am still waiting on the uh, A pillar to arrive. Uh, it has not showed up yet. However, I did get a notification this morning saying that it is on its way. It left the uh, FedEx delivery place this morning. And uh, it should be here. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's going to be here by 2. Because um, I'm thinking right about then is when I will have everything ready, uh, wired up and everything. All I'll have to do is slide my gauges into the new pillar, install the new pillar and then plug everything up and we should be good to go. Uh, so I'm going to get to work on getting those old gauges out and I'll show you guys what it looks like whenever they're out, I guess. All right, you guys, so uh, I did manage to get the old gauges out. They're right here on top of this grill, ready to go down to my dad's shop. And uh, I also got the uh, sensor wire ran into the cab uh, and I also took the a pillar off waiting on the new one to get here it should be here any moment 
but I have got some errands I have got to run. Uh, and before I do that, though, I'm going to just show you guys that it is still uh, decently clean looking under here, even with the two extra bulky looking wires. Um, I checked it two or three times. I have no fuel leaks at all. Uh, so that's good. And uh, so when I get back, I'm going to go ahead and get the gauges wired in, get their wiring harnesses completely finished. If my A-pillar's not here yet, uh, no big deal. I'll have everything ready so that as soon as it gets here, slide the gauges in it, bolt it up, uh, plug everything into the gauges, and then we should be uh, ready to rock and roll. So um, I didn't even really get to the time-consuming part, which is the wiring because they give you these really short wiring harnesses with these gauges. Give me one second and I'll dig one out. They give you everything uh, that you would need to mount this without something like this. Uh, but this is one thing that I don't like about them so far. Really, it's the only thing I dislike about them so far is that uh, it's such a short wiring harness. Well, it may actually be decently long. No, I don't think it's going to be. So, uh, this is the wiring harness to hook power up to the gauges and everything like that. So you got your... So, uh, I'm going to run and get these little errands figured out and get those finished real quick, and then I'll be back, and then the part will be here by then and uh we're gonna get this thing tidied up all right so what's up guys it's a different day than when i originally started this video but as you can see i did end up getting my gauges in uh i was in a bit of a rush so i wasn't really able to you know show the rest of it but the rest of it was really easy uh, all i did was i wired the two power harnesses together back here and then i ran my own wires down here to the actual fuse box back here on the firewall and then pretty much uh the piece came in about 10 minutes ago and then uh i just threw the gauges in and got them all plugged up so you can see them now and so as you can see the fuel pressure gauge is the biggest thing that uh i wanted to get put in here uh and reason being so that i can get my uh, tuning straightened out on my uh, computer here so uh that pretty much wraps it up for this video guys i mean pretty much everybody has a video on a glow shift gauge somewhere so i'm not going to go too in depth with that but just to show you that they do both work i'm going to fire it up real quick so you can see that oil pressure go up as you can see everything works fine uh, I haven't given it a test drive and actually got it up to temp and uh, give it a good rip and snort to see if uh, see if my fuel pressure drops but uh, I can rev it up right here just a little bit fuel pressure oil pressure gauge works good and uh, my fuel pressure never drops below like 62 psi and until the uh, when I first switch the key on and it's priming everything up, it'll be a little below that. But uh, everything works with like my lights and stuff. They'll dim a little bit, which I actually prefer this state a little more. I like this dim. So later on, I may actually go under there and uh, wire this thing in straight dim so that way there's no bright. Because uh, I don't know, the, the bright is almost too bright to me and it makes that white look a little blue. And I just want the pure white look. Uh, but I mean, uh, I got this pillar gauge from Anvil Auto. Uh, if you guys need a link to it or anything like that, you know, just leave a comment below. I hope you guys like this video. And uh, as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.